Hi everyone, welcome back to our Meet the Founder series, 10 Questions With. Today I am joined by Sam from Inhabit and thank you for joining Sam. No worries, thank you for having me. I mean, uh, when we start these interviews, it's very, it's very innovative. We, uh, we tend to ask you wh where you began, uh, what would be the first idea for Inhabit and where did it all begin? Okay, um, so I suppose Cam and I have always been interested in exploring the use of technology to solve problems. Um, and it's something we experienced at previous companies around that, the, the lack of accessible almost climate action. So what started as a carbon compensation subscription service sort of to give people a simple route into climate action has evolved a lot since then. Just a case of like the more research we did, the more we learned, the more we kind of got to the heart of the problem being like truly understanding sort of what your impact, what the impact of your business is and sort of where that impact is coming from. So I suppose there's no real origin story to what we're doing today. Um, and the, yeah, the sort of concept has changed and evolved uh, sort of so much over the last couple of years, but, but that's how it all began. Amazing. And what is it that you hope and have it will change? What is the end goal? Um, I think just in terms of change, it's just the way people think about and make business decisions. I think like doing a carbon audit or a carbon accounting exercise is one thing and it is that necessary first step. But really, that's just the sort of the front door to climate action. And we want to shine a light on the fact that each business decision has an associated climate impact to it. We want to bring that to the fore and embed almost climate consciousness into the heart of the decision making process just as much as any sort of other strategic pillar, whether that's growth goals, operational efficiency, cultivating a great sort of culture within a workplace, we think sort of climate goals and considerations should be a part of this line of thinking. Amazing. And when you were kind of designing Inhabit, did you have um, like a particular user in mind or, um, you know, who are you hoping that Inhabit will help? So I think, um, I suppose from a high level sort of SMEs or predominantly digital businesses, um, just because that's sort of like where our original experience sort of, sort of came from. Um, but really, it's just a more accessible way for businesses to understand their impact and an alternative to the more costly climate consultancies that were sort of available in the market already. But essentially, it's just for any business that wants to put sort of climate at their core and embed a leading climate strategy into their business. So for those who don't know where to start or what to do, like what good looks like, um, but we're still at the beginning of our sort of journey really as well. So it's starting with those that want to lead on climate early and also want to help shape and have it into that real uh, leading climate solution that we hope to be. I think the kind of business focus is really amazing because as, as a consumer who tries to make individual choices, seeing like your company take that step is like so powerful. Yes, yes. I think, you know, yeah, businesses have a sort of a real important role to play, I suppose, even beyond like their own, like their own sort of like footprint. There is just, you know, a real kind of network or ripple effect there that is, um, yeah, sort of a lot more powerful and perhaps like a little less quantifiable and can be, yeah, sort of a leading light for their, so their employees. And then that kind of has that natural kind of trickle down effect. So, um, yeah, we think it was a, a really, a really great place to, to begin. Sure. And so kind of carbon offsetting and uh, kind of net zero is all very, very big right now. Um, but what do you think makes an habit different from anything else that is out there? Um, like there are, yeah, there are a number of startups that uh, and maybe yeah, more established businesses with their own take on climate management. I think our real focus is on sort of decarbonisation. So the carbon accounting and the measurement process is like a very sort of hot topic at the moment. But that is, you know, uh, as mentioned previously, that is just sort of the front door to real climate action. And it's about sort of delivering decarbonisation at scale, as opposed to like a carbon audit and offsetting and a carbon sort of like neutral badge. So it's a bit more into the into the, the, the depths of the business and really working out where that impact is coming from and what sort of changes and sort of policies they can implement to reduce that. Really interesting. And I can hear you. I feel bad I'm that I'm taking your attention. <laughs> I know. I, yeah she uh she really wants some some attention and the door open but she's gonna have to wait a few minutes <laughs> for anyone listening because I've had the door yeah. to yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah good timing to be very disruptive <laughs> always um are there any success stories you can share about the impact you've had on your users 
Um, so I think, yeah, recently we've been uh, quite a long term relationship in work with a London based co working space, um, which initially started as a, I suppose the core offering of measuring their footprint and implementing sort of a reduction strategy along with some sort of climate uh, target setting. This has really evolved into sort of a lot deeper service with sort of supporting them with their wider sustainability strategy, sort of committing to working only with ethical suppliers and almost what the framework for an ethical supplier assessment looks like, um, as well as helping them support the impact reduction of their members. And is this kind of network effect or this sort of ripple effect that kind of, um, yeah, can result in sort of massive impact. It is definitely something that we're sort of really proud to be a part of. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. You're doing well as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they would be more distracted. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> typical. Um, I mean, she's just cheering along for all your your success. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my biggest cheerleader. Um, I guess so. Um, more about you as a founder. Um, what's one thing you wish you had known at the beginning of your startup journey? Uh, it's hard to say just one thing, but there are yeah many, many things I wish I'd known. Um, but a big one is probably like there's like there's always tomorrow and like it is OK to fail. I think there's been like on a number of occasions where you think you've been too ambitious. You're never going to get there. But, you know, just focus on the next task, the next goal, the next milestone. And then when you look back sort of six months, a year later, you'll be really surprised by how far you've come. I think that, that's really great, like that kind of perspective mm -hmm. that you can kind of lose when you're stuck in something. You can lose it. <laughs> you can lose it. Yeah. yeah, it's nice to just sort of like, yeah, sort of take a, take a step back. Like it is such like an intense, full-on journey that it's quite hard to like just have a, yeah, sort of come up to breathe. And yeah, it's kind of there where, yeah, you sort of like clear your thinking and things get a bit more obvious. And sometimes, yeah, sort of stepping back for a moment can almost be the, the best thing you can do. Sure. And to what three qualities do you think make a successful finder? Mm, I wish I knew, and I would love to hear from one. Um, but I think one thing I would say is that either like sort of founders or leaders are like made and not born. Um, and it's quite hard to distill it down to three things. Um, they do come in all different shapes and sizes. So if you take myself and Cam as an example, we are just completely different people with a completely different take on things, different attributes. Um, but what we maybe have in common is, you know, you have to really be open to learning along the way. Maybe don't be too precious about what you think you knew. There's that sort of quite famous quote where it's like, it's not what you, what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. And I think that's definitely a good thing to bear in mind then is and is yeah sort of very applicable um so that's a good one and then probably the two others are just both around the team i think support the team above all else like they are just hands down sort of the most important important asset or commodity that you have um and yeah just make sure you surround yourself with a team that sort of complements you and each other um yeah sort of very crucial very um useful advice for any finders there um i especially like that idea of being made not born because i think imposter syndrome as a finder is very strong so yeah big time i think we um neither of us i think you do you know you do come across sort of founders who it's always sort of being a goal of theirs and it's like a real kind of driving factor like this entrepreneurial um kind of element but it probably wasn't quite so apparent between myself and Cam and then yeah I suppose there is that imposter syndrome you have to kind of get over the uh to yeah kind of just be a bit more kind of free and have the confidence to kind of uh execute on 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 all these sort of like ideas and visions that you have and um and yeah it's just worth sort of bearing in mind that it doesn't happen overnight and you just keep keep working away. Great thank you Sam and you know as a chance to shout out any other kind of tech figure companies there aside from Inhabit are there any other tech figure companies that you admire? Yes uh, Thriver um, so they are a sort of preventative healthcare company and they're sort of putting better health in people's hands um, like empowering people with sort of health information to support preventative healthcare in an age where sort of chronic conditions put such a big burden on the NHS and health systems at large um, so they're doing great things and then also Aside from what they're doing, their founders have been particularly 
like supportive and have been like helped us so much um, as we try and navigate kind of what they've been through the last sort of few years. Um, so yeah, they're definitely sort of the team and, and, and people we really looked up, up to have a lot of admiration for. One of my favorite questions, because I just have a whole other a Google and see what else other um, people are doing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's there's so many great companies out there that you, you know in the climate space, um, patch, patch.io. Um, they're kind of making sort of more sort of niche, nascent carbon removal technologies sort of accessible um, to kind of, yeah, really kind of like fund the development of uh, sort of carbon removal at scale. It's like a really interesting area. Um, and yeah, sort of we're actually sort of working to uh, sort of integrate them on the platform. So it's kind of, yeah, sort of offer, offer the types of carbon removals that, um, that they sort of have access to. So, so yeah, there are some, some yeah, great companies doing really good things at the moment. And so if anyone wanted, if anyone's kind of interested in what Inhabit is doing and wants to find out more about the space and carbon offsetting um, and why it's so important, is there anywhere you'd signpost them? Um, they could come and talk to us. Uh, we'd be happy to talk as long as you'd like and then even probably a bit longer than that. Um, I think but in terms of resources, so like the GHG protocol is like the framework for um, Kind of the global standard for measuring and managing carbon emissions. Um, like they got loads of good resources. SBTI are the Science Based Targets Initiative, and they kind of define and promote like what a robust climate sort of target looks like. Um, with again, with lots of resources on the website, so there is a wealth of information out there. I think that the, the struggle really is kind of like distilling that down into that kind of digestible, actionable chunks, um, which is hopefully where where we come in. For sure, for sure. Like I think, yeah, knowing where to look when there is so much is almost um, a curse and a blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is, um, yeah. There's, there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, yeah, sort of frameworks and methodologies, and it's, you know, uh, what to align yourself to. Like, what does good look like? How, uh, what kind of like resources are needed to tackle this sort of job? Um, yeah, we're all kind of questions that sort of, you know, we faced ourselves getting into this a few, a few years ago. So. Yeah, not not the easiest sort of. I think that's probably part of it where it feels like quite a high barrier to entry. Um, and yeah, once you kind of sort of like get through that, um, it is like a real kind of like uh, accessible task, and it's not quite as daunting as you think. It's just you know knowing where to turn and and, and where to begin. And so earlier you um, shouted out another tech for good company. Time to kind of shout about yourself. Um, what's next for you and your venture and how can anyone help who's listening? Yes, yeah, so uh, well, we're in the process of closing our seed round. So an extremely exciting as well as challenging time all round. Um, but yeah, sort of real next steps sort of build an amazing team that will get us closer to our vision um, and start to make a dent in decarbonising the UK's SME sector and help by sort of talking about us to your friends, co-workers, family, um, We'll have a lot of uh, quite a few positions open, and that next phase of recruitment will be sort of really pivotal. So, yeah, if you're passionate about sort of climate tech in general, about our mission, you can help us by joining us. And uh, yeah, feel free to reach out, and we'd love to chat uh, to anyone who is interested. Amazing. Um, well, thank you so much for your time, Sam. No problem. Thank you very much.